I want to start uh, with my op-ed today that I published over at HartmanReport.com, however. Um, it's titled, Democrats Must Reclaim Their Brand as the Freedom Party. There was a time in this country when the Democratic Party was branded as the Freedom Party. They called themselves that, the Party of Freedom. Franklin Roosevelt said in his 1944 State of the Union address, necessitous men are not free men. And what did he mean by that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you're hungry and you don't have access to food, you're not free. If you can't afford decent housing and therefore don't have a safe place to live, you're not free. If you're out of work and can't support yourself or your family, you're not free. If you're sick and you can't afford medical treatment, you're not free. If you live in fear of right-wing violence or terrorism because of your religion or the color of your skin, you're not free. And if you have the inherent capability to become a scientist or a union electrician, but you can't afford college or trade school to reach your potential, you are not free. As FDR said in the next sentence of that speech, he said, people who are hungry, people who are out of a job, are the stuff of which dictatorships are made. It's time for the Democratic Party to start messaging like Franklin Roosevelt did. For two generations now, Republicans have been telling us, you know, since, since Reagan, basically, since 1980, they have been telling us that uh, things aren't getting bad because of Reagan cutting taxes on rich people, so all the money's going to the top. No, that's not why things are getting bad for the American middle class. In fact, the Republicans are messaging specifically to white middle class Americans. And so they're saying, well, things aren't getting bad for the white middle class because Reagan cut taxes at the top. Things aren't getting bad for the white middle class because Reagan started the whole free trade thing, sending our jobs overseas. No, no, no. It's because of the great replacement theory that Tucker Carlson will tell you all about on Fox so-called news, that the Democrats are trying to replace white people with brown people and black people who are going to take those good jobs. Right. When FDR came into the White House in 1933, there was the wreckage of the Republican Great Depression. And yes, that's what they called it up until 1952 when Dwight Eisenhower got elected president. They called it the Republican Great Depression. And so FDR began rebranding the Democratic Party as the Party of Freedom. When he accepted his, uh, his party's nomination in Philadelphia in 1936 for his second term, he said that very word freedom in itself and of necessity suggests freedom from some restraining power. It was to win freedom from the tyranny of political autocracy that the American Revolution was fought. But, he says, since that struggle, however, man's inventive genius released new forces in our land which reordered the lives of our people. And he talks about how this all created a new problem for those who sought to remain free. What was that? Big business. For out of this modern civilization, Franklin Roosevelt said, economic royalists carved new dynasties. New kingdoms were built upon concentration of control over material things. Through new uses of corporations, banks, and securities, new machinery of industry and agriculture, of labor and capital, the whole structure of modern life was impressed into this royal service. And then he takes it back to freedom. He says, throughout the nation, opportunity was limited by monopoly. Individual initiative was crushed in the cogs of a great machine. The field for open for free business was more and more restricted. Private enterprise indeed became too private. It became privileged enterprise, not free enterprise. Are you noticing a theme here? Freedom? This is what the Democratic Party was all about in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. LBJ, we're going to give people the freedom to vote, the freedom to live free of, of discrimination. Franklin Roosevelt went on to say liberty requires opportunity to make a living, a living decent according to the standard of time, a living which gives a person not only enough to live by, but something to live for. And then he talks about, you know, well, he continues in the next sentence, for too many of us, the political equality we had once won was meaningless in the face of economic inequality. A small group had concentrated into their own hands and almost complete control over other people's property, other people's money, other people's labor, other people's lives. For too many of us, life was no longer free. There's that word again. Liberty, no longer real. 
Men could no longer follow the pursuit of happiness. Thus, he said, today, we stand committed to the proposition that freedom is no half and half affair. I don't know if you caught it yesterday. Nikki Haley was tweeting about how uh, Democrats are now the socialist party. Right. Well, they said the same thing about FDR. They called him a communist. They called him a socialist. They called him a tyrant. And what did he say? He threw it right back in their face. He said, these economic royalists complain that we seek to overthrow the institutions of America. What they really complain about is that we seek to take away their power. And our allegiance to American institutions requires the overthrow of this kind of power. In vain, Franklin Roosevelt said, they seek to hide behind the flag and the Constitution. In their blindness, they forget what the flag and the Constitution stand for. Now, as always, they stand for democracy, not tyranny, for freedom. There's that word again, not subjection, and against a dictatorship by mob rule and the overprivileged alike. So then they started calling him a bleeding heart liberal. Oh, you just want to help the poor little people. And, he's, and he replied, he said, we do not see faith, hope, and charity as unattainable ideals, but we use them as stout supports of a nation fighting the fight for freedom in a modern civilization. So what do we have now? Build back better. This is how the Democratic Party needs to brand itself, as the party of freedom. Build back better enhances the freedom of working class Americans by providing a floor through which they won't fall as they strive for economic success. Ending or changing the filibuster to put voting rights into place ensures democracy, the essential bulwark of freedom to citizens of every state, even those that Republicans are trying to turn into right-wing oligarchies. Canceling student debt and providing low-cost health care to all Americans frees young people from crushing financial burdens that are not experienced by the citizens of any other developed country in the world. And vaccine and man ma mask mandates slow, or even when they're fully implemented, stop the spread of the COVID pandemic. By the way, they're seeing this in China right now, where they've actually stopped it through most of the country. And thus are an explicit part of a freedom agenda. I get it, China's not free, but hey. The freedom to take your kid to school, the freedom to go to a restaurant or theater, the freedom to shop for groceries without fear of death and disease. Now, there are, of course, some corporate Democrats out there who are saying, oh, no, we don't, we don't want to do these things. We don't want to build back better. Uh, no, we don't want to end the filibuster. We don't want to cancel student debt. We don't want to provide health care to all. Oh, no, we can't do that. You know, that would uh, blow up the budget deficit or some other nonsense. We call them today the corporate problem solver Democrats. FDR, in 1940, there was a faction of Democrats who wanted him to, to, to dump uh, Henry Wallace as his VP. And he wrote a letter to them. He said, in the century in which we live, the Democratic Party has received the support of the electorate only when the party, with absolute clarity, has been the champion of progressive and liberal policies and principles of government. This party has, con has failed consistently when through political trading and chicanery it has fallen into the control of those interests, personal and financial, which think in terms of dollars instead of in terms of human values. And then he just laid it out for his party. He said, basically, you get rid of Henry Wallace, you're getting rid of me. He said, until the Democratic Party, through this convention, makes overwhelmingly clear its stand in favor of social progress and liberalism, and shakes off all the shackles of control fastened upon it by the forces of conservatism, reaction, and appeasement. It will not continue its march to victory. It is best not to straddle ideals, Franklin Roosevelt wrote to his party leaders. It is best for America to have the fight out here and now. The party must go wholly one way or the other. It cannot face in both directions at the same time. And this is what the Democratic Party needs to do right now. Everything the Democratic Party is promoting, I, I defy you to identify one thing that couldn't be rebranded as freedom. People say, you need to get it on a bumper sticker. Here you are. Democrats, the Freedom Party. Build Back Better gives you freedom. Infrastructure gives you freedom. Ending student loans gives you freedom. Ending medical debt gives you freedom. A good minimum wage gives you freedom. 
The Democratic Party needs to reclaim that word. It's the most powerful branding device in America. Take it, Democrats, please. And let's all start talking about freedom and how the Biden agenda, the progressive agenda, the Democratic agenda, outside of a few outliers within the party, yeah, I know about Mansion and Cinema, outside of them, our party is about freedom.